In our chapter about the Jews of Arabia, I mentioned that very few people in the world know that there were Judaized Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula centuries before Muhammad and his Quran. The same is of course also true about the Christians of Arabia, who also preceded Muhammad by at least 300 years. Why do you think this is the case, and who were these Christian Arabs? In answer to the first part of your questions, it has been and still is the deliberate policy of the Arabian followers of Muhammad not to inform a generally ignorant world that there were Christianized as well as Judaized Arabian tribes in the peninsula long before Muhammad and his Quran. In this way, people would not know that he was influenced enormously by their scriptures and traditions without which there would have been no Quran. As almost all of our listeners realize now, Muhammad plagiarized, plundered, pirated and or perverted the scriptures, traditions and fetishes of the pagan Arabians, the Jews, the Christians, the Zoroastrians and incorporated them in his Quran. They want the world, including Muhammadan Muslims, to believe the self-evident lies that Muhammad discovered monotheism, that Allah was God and that he was a prophet. Let us now reveal the facts to those who are willing to listen and to learn. Shortly after the conversion of the Roman Empire to Christianity, in 325 AD under the Emperor Constantine, Christianity started penetrating the Arabian Peninsula through hermits, traders and or emissaries sent by the Roman emperors to discuss trade relations with the Arabs to get spices and other Eastern products. A long time before Muhammad, Christianity had already spread to Egypt, North Africa, Abyssinia, Syria and Iraq and was moving south to the Arabian Peninsula. In AD 450 or 451, the great flood of the Yemen occurred. As a result of this, different tribes from the people of Saba were compelled to leave Yemen and disperse in different parts of Arabia and beyond. Thus, the Bani Ghassan went to settle in Syria, Bani Lakhm in Hira, Iraq, Bani Khuza'a between Jeddah and Mecca and the Aws and the Khazraj went to settle in Yathrib. Under the Byzantine Empire, the Bani Ghassan and other tribes of Arabia near the Syrian frontier followed the Monophysite Christianity and controlled the northern end of the Great Road up through the Hejaz. In the meantime, the Abyssinians who invaded southern Arabia of the Yemen were also Monophysite. Hence, shortly before Muhammad's arrival on the scene, the Byzantine Empire had three major Christian sects in operation, not necessarily tolerant of each other, and they were the state church, usually called Greek Orthodox or Malkite, the Jacobite, and the Nestorians. Most were actual Arabians who converted to Christianity and were in contact with the pagan Arabs of the peninsula through tribal affiliations and trading caravans. In fact, Early Arabic poetry shows the Christian hermit as a familiar figure and the same is true in numerous verses of the Quran and the Hadith. According to the historical records, Muhammad actually plagiarized some very important verses from other poets, both pagan and Christian, and put them in his Quran. Such poets as Emrul Qais, Hassan bin Thabit, Zayd bin Nufayl, etc. There were Christian hermitages in Wadi al-Qura, well in the interior of the peninsula, east of the Hejaz, whose monks attended the fairs during the holy forbidden months of the pagan Arabs, where they traded, regaled listeners with stories and recited poetry. The Christians were able to spread the word among the pagans and help increase conversion. Arabic history relates that Christianity was introduced into South Arabia by a Syrian monk called Faymiyun, Fimian. The poetry of the pagan Arabians show that they valued their nomadic way of life infinitely more than a settled one, and looked with utter contempt upon agricultural people whom they could rob at will if and when circumstances arose. I would like our listeners to be aware that almost all of the records that are available to the world regarding the history of the Arabian Christians come from the unsubstantiated and one-sided reports left to us by the Muhammadan Muslim victors who forced into conversion, slaughtered or exiled the original native and indigenous population of Arabia's Christians and destroyed all their records and traces from the face of the earth. Since most of the Christians were associated with the civilized society, they too, 
like the Jews and the Judaized Arabs, occupied the most fertile areas that they could find among the tens of thousands of square miles of otherwise scorching and sterile desert. The chief center of Christianity in southern Arabia was the town of Al Najran, situated in the one part that was fertile. On the eve of Muhammadan Islam, it had probably the wealthiest population in the area. It was famous for making textiles in which silk was employed. The Yemeni garments that figure so much in early pagan Arabian poetry were manufactured there. It was also famous for its leather and armaments industry. Najran seems to have had a much more advanced political structure than other Arabian towns, including Mecca or Medina. It was ruled by a triumvirate, a Sayyid, an Aqib, and a bishop. The Sayyid acted as chief sheikh in the same tradition of Arab tribal leaders who dealt with all external affairs, exchanged treaties, controlled commerce, acted as host at the periodical fairs, and led military expeditions. Al-Aqib seems to have dealt only with internal affairs such as administering the municipality and policing the city. The bishop was supreme in all ecclesiastical affairs and ruled over all the clergy and monks who formed a considerable section of the community. It was through this town, which became the center of Christianity in the Arabian Peninsula, that the Christian message was spreading. Envied by pagan Arabs generally for the great wealth, the people of Najran were nonetheless held in great esteem for their nobility and the ancient poets seemed to have regarded them as the noblest of the Arabs. This was of course at a date much earlier than the false pretensions of the Quraysh of Mecca whose repute for nobility became only recognized after the spread of Muhammadan Islam and based entirely for their kinship to Muhammad. Like Mecca, the Arabian Peninsula had several other holy places of pilgrimage called also Kaaba, one of which was in Najran even before the arrival of the Christian Arabs. The Byzantine Emperor spent a lot of money building a very imposing cathedral as a frontier bastion to impress the pagan Arabs as well as a center to spread Christianity. This is described as a very splendid edifice adorned with marble and mosaic that had to be transported all the way from Syria. Najran remained a Christian city into the Muhammadan Muslim era until its inhabitants were expelled by Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second Khalifa. Most of the exiles went to Iraq where they founded a town also called Najran. The Arabian Christians endured much less than the fate of the Judaized Arabs who were mostly slaughtered or enslaved. Both communities suffered enormously and irreversibly at the hands of Muhammad and his followers. Under the pretext that Muhammad upon his deathbed instructed his followers that two religions cannot exist in the land of the Muhammadan Muslims. Al-Muwatta Hadith 45.17 Yahya related to me from Malik from Ismail ibn Abi Hakim that he heard Umar ibn al-Aziz one of the last things that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said was, May Allah fight the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as places of prostration. Two deens, religions, shall not coexist in the land of the Arabs. Al-Muwatta Hadith 45.18 Yahya related to me from Malik from Ibn Shihab that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, Two deens shall not coexist in the Arabian Peninsula. Malik said that Ibn Shihab said, Umar ibn al-Khattab searched for information about that until he was absolutely convinced that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, had said, two deans shall not coexist in the Arabian Peninsula, and he therefore expelled the Jews from Khaybar. In this, the 21st century, Christians in almost all the Muhammadan Muslim states are being persecuted and reduced in numbers through emigration. The most disgusting and disturbing fact is the deafening silence about this subject emanating from the media, the politicians, and the churches 